Hey everybody, I want to bring you all this little freezer, 12 volt, 120 volt, it's got a little adapter with it. I think it's right at 13 or 14 months. And um, so far so good. Now it's typical of these things rebranded, um, but it's a Costway. You'll find them listed as Costways. And I'll put links below the video. Uh, there's numerous options. Now, what you want to look for is you want to look for this kind of design for the ventilation system that's in it. And that's the ones that use the Dan Foss compressor style. So it's really kind of a, a very durable system. Now, right now, this thing is running and it's pulling 42 watts. So now on 12 volt from your car, believe it or not, it'll pull less because this has to be converted, see? So you're going to lose about... 10 to 12 percent of your efficiency so it will run on about 37 to 38 watts at 12 volts now what is that mathematically well that's roughly about three amps so how do you get three amps 100 watt solar panel will run this thing um this one's been kind of cool now it's still got its tag on it. it's a little little bit for wear but it shows you here estimated yearly energy cost now that's based on 10 months, 10 months of use, uh, and I think 10 cents a kilowatt. So you're looking at that, and it's giving you $24 to $41 a year. However, if you want to go off-grid and solar with it, let me look up here, and I'll show you the details here, and you'll notice the other side isn't lit up, and I'll explain that here in just a minute why both banks where these baskets go are not lit up and there's a reason for it because we're using the whole thing as a freezer my wife goes up to the store 38 miles one way to a large grocery store she buys stuff and then she carries this back in her van so you're you're talking 76 mile round trip but 38 miles of this um if you buy things that come out of the freezer and 38 miles in the back of your car even in an ice cooler it's going to be all thawed out because remember an ice cooler is 32 degrees 32 and kind of above this here any regular normal freezer unit is supposed to run at between 12 and zero yeah zero go test your freezer in your house it should be running as close to zero as you can get it now this one here will run negative four so uh celsius wise um i'd say that's i don't know somewhere around negative 10 or something but the way that this thing is set up is it uses a genuine R134 compressor. So it is, it is very, very high efficiency. And I hope I got that right. But it's standard automotive. So the automotive grade coolant that's in this, um, if you know your car, it's designed not to foam or designed not to get little air bubbles in it. So that your because your, your car is going all over the place, hard turns, you know. It's designed the same way. And now people say, well, it'd be better if it's on R22 or 12. Well, we could, of course can't get 12. I don't think you get 22 anymore, but not true. This being a mobile device able to be lifted, moved around, you need it to settle down as quick as possible, which this does. So this came in about 20 minutes ago. I was plugged into my wife's van and sitting in my wife's van, it was at about six degrees that's Fahrenheit and you'll see here where it shows the power of the battery because it's currently on this now to be honest and fair the uh, the other power supply is a very heavy duty I think it's right at 10 gauge Chinese gauge um, with a high temperature plug so that's a high temperature plug this design so it's made to handle long-term running because you know with DC devices the surges will get them but this is designed to handle that and it does a very very good job of it and so far not a single problem at all nothing wrong with this it's been running just fine it's got just a little scuffs on it because she's been using it and of course the plug you can't screw up on it because it has a notch see it right there that's only going to go one way and this does not this is not a a electronic cooling system this is a real genuine compressor and it's so quiet you don't know what's running but you can put your hand down here and kind of feel a little bit of air now on standby and idle it's using basically nothing one and a half watts and one and a half watts is running the board it's running everything 
and when the little fan kicks on, there's a little fan, it'll go up to three watts. So there's a little bitty fan that kind of cycles some of the excess heat out if it still has some. It'll run a little longer than the compressor. Now, the way that these are designed is they are hyper insulated. And I mean, they got a lot of insulation in them. And unlike a regular cooler, no, no, don't pay attention to that. <laughs> Sorry. My, because I put this in the van or in the back of my truck, I can't reach around and flip this up because these fit real tight. I can't do that. And I've added this. And don't worry, it holds really well. So this right here allows me from behind my seat to reach around and snap it up and open it up. Now, you just seen what's in it. We're going to show you how much this is going to go right here. I'll move all this out of the way. This is just a case for a window. These are the baskets that go in it. And this is the special item where you'll see that these two separate, separate features are two zones. All right. Now, the way that they work is you see this little plug down here. There's a sensor inside of here that when this is inside, when it's down in the center, it allows the cooling effect to be like a refrigerator and freezer, okay? So you have refrigerator side, it'll be like 45 degrees, freezer side, uh, the difference is about 30 degrees. So over here you'll have roughly 15 degrees or less, and over here you'll have like 45 degrees or less, but about 30 degrees space. So you can run this one down to 40, and this over here will be at 10 degrees, perfectly perfect for freezing. So if you want to use it for a refrigerator and freezer, so if you've got an RV, a camper, or something like that, and you don't realize that just a couple of 100-watt solar panels and one or two deep cycle batteries, you can run this thing day, day and night. Just constant. Three amps is nothing. And so the compressor is down inside of here. Let me turn on this light. So a lot of people probably want to know what's in these, so I will get as close as I can. You'll see all the cooling fins and everything else. This is not Peltier, this is not thermal electric, this is a genuine compressor. Um, let me get over here. So a lot of people don't know what's in these. They are not thermal electric. You see the tubes and everything in there? Okay, and then I'll get over here and do the same. If I can look inside there. There we go. Hopefully that'll focus. But you'll see there's genuine compressor parts in here. Now I could take this apart and give you a little tour of the internals. We had one of these. Let me get back up here. Once before, that's a different brand. It showed the compressor up here, so you might have seen those. And it was a metal case. It lasted about four months. This one's almost 14 months old. This one goes once or twice a week, riding around in the vehicles. It's stayed clean. A little bit of, I mean, I guess a few chips in the wheels, but that's okay. That you know, I hit concrete with it a lot. But you can take this. And put it in your car, leave it plugged in, spend an hour in a Walmart or in the grocery store. No problem. Ain't going to hurt your battery. It's designed to disconnect itself and reconnect. Now, not all of them will do this. The one previous one we had did not. Um, but this will disconnect. When that battery bar gets down to two bars, you can't start your car. So this one here will get down to two bars and disconnect. It will not kill your car battery. That's what I love about this. My wife has left this in her car running the whole time. She was at work one time, forgot it. Um, didn't nothing go bad. So we're going to go ahead and unload it. These run about three to $400. You're going to pay money for the good ones and the low wattage and the low power usage. So let's get this open. Now you see why I have that. It's like a hell trying to get my hands on there. Look at the lock clips and it's got real tight fitting. All right, so let's just get everything out of here. Okay, so we'll start unloading. Look at that. This is my, my wife went to the store, guys, okay? So I'm taking a little advantage of all this. Look at the frost on this stuff. Taking advantage of everything that my wife buys to make the video. How silly of me. All right, so, oh, see now, I didn't even know that. I got pizza. That's cheap pizza. All right, so, yep, we got them. And breakfast hams. Yeah, good to be married to the right lady, huh? Look at that. So, oh, that ain't mine. I bet y'all know who that is. All right, so we'll keep going, and we're going to look at how much stuff. Kids love lunch meat. So I'm not trying to expose anybody's specific brands, guys, so. 
Um, oh, now there we go. Ready for the barbecue pit. Mama got some of that. All right, so, and then that, oh, and then she carries these little blue ice things in there with her. She throws them in there before she takes this out to the car and plugs it in, so it makes the cooling cycle much faster. And you can tell they were starting to fall. Look at them crumpled all over. Um, all right, so we have in here this much stuff right here. That's what just fit in this freezer. Now, even though it's just about two cubic feet, there's a lot of stuff you can put in here. And look at the temperature is still staple. It'll come up here in a minute. It'll start coming up. But it's still stable and very frozen. So, um, now, I don't want to leave this stuff out too long. It does have, unlike almost 90% of them, look in the bottom here. It's got a plug. Brilliant, right? All right, so the way these are designed is you have basket number one. So if you want to set these upright, you can't. These are not made to set upright. Like I said, they are not a Peltier cooling system. They're not electronic in any way. These are real compressors. It must sit like it sits now, okay? So I'll throw that back in there. And we'll get this one over here. And she just had these sitting loose in the back of the car, so I had to get them out. All right. So let's see. Oh, there we go. You'll notice the basket. The basket has a slight shape difference. See that right there? That's where the coils come back around. So they're internal, real seriously internal. Now, that's where this comes into effect. You're going to see here. Oh, hold on. Let me do. Oh, and I did it too fast. All right. Now, it's not down. You see that disc? It's not down. That's a sensor. You know, like the, the chip, believe it or not, in your uh, credit cards and stuff. That's what that is. Now watch this. I'm going to drop it. Watch that right there. Boom. How you like that? So it's going to give you a split. This will be a little warmer. This will be a lot colder. Now, the settings, I can make them both freezer and leave all that in there together. You see? It's just three degrees. And, of course, because of that, the compressor will kick on. I can hear it buzzing right now. And it is 44, 45. And when they first kick, when it first kicks, it's going to surge to about 55, 60 watts. That lasts just about 15 seconds. And the rest of the time it runs. And remember, this is off the transformer, so it's pulling more power because it has to convert. And in a car, this would be pulling about probably, I don't know, 10% less. So it would be 45 or 43 watts, 46 watts like that in the, in the fire-up cycle. So there's your surge. There it is in the mid-50s, getting up in the mid-50s. Um, the cool part about this, cool part, that's funny, uh, is that all of this, unlike a lot of them, uh, and I'm going to have to hurry and get this back in here before I get skinned for not having it in there, but watch this, watch that right there as I lift it up. Boom, you see? And the compressor buzzing like hell because it didn't like that. See? Now, Why'd the compressor buzz? Because there's a valve in there that switches it on the difference. So light, less cool, more cool. And when you pull that up, that valve kicks, more back pressure on the compressor, and you'll, you'll hear it. I don't know if you can hear it, but it buzzed. So what you got to do is I'll come up in temperature, above the temperature up here, equal to. See where they're blinking equal? They were blinking equal. And then I'll pull it out. Now it won't buzz. You can leave this at home. You can leave this at home. You can leave this at home. It's very smart to take you some like uh, blue ice packs. So if this compressor, or if this uh, refrigerator, freezer, it's a, it's both. If this thing has been sitting, not operating, and the temperature is equal to room temperature, then get you a few of these, throw them in there, close it, power it up. Now what does that do? That helps this thing draw less power. And the reason it does is because it allows a shorter period of time for it to remove the heat. That's what refrigeration does. It doesn't make cool. It removes heat. The absence of heat is cool. So 
that's how it works. You can see it frosted inside, and it's a little dirty. I should have probably washed it out, but I didn't want to pull all this out, but she just showed up in 45 minutes ago with in her van. Um, so I will pull those out, but you can see I'm not even going to be careful about this. I'm not even trying. Now, my wife is going to be pissed, but I didn't even... <laughs> I didn't even uh, spend any of my time trying to perfect this, but I'll just try to throw it in the way John shops. All right, just throw it all. Look at this. Hard as a rock there. All right, kind of like my head. Now, the smart thing to do is always turn your foam up. You see that? And the reason is, is because it helps, it helps, believe it or not, create an insulated blanket. I know, it sounds silly. All right, so let's get all this in there. And... I like peas. All right, so, and hot dogs, and yeah, I like those too. So, uh, actually, that's peach. I don't like peach. I like the blackberry if they got them. All right, so, pull the sausage. That right there, a lot of barbecue stuff I'm bought. Okay, so, get it all in there, all in there. The sorbet, I call, call it sherbet. So, get that in there, and then... Make it all go down. See, my wife's good at this. And then I've got, oh, no wonder she stuck that up right. So, the pizza will fit. But, you've seen what's in this, and I'm going to take this, go put it in the regular refrigerator, freezer. But, that's a lot of stuff. So, if you're going grocery shopping, this is about five bags of groceries in the freezer, you know, the plastic bags, that'll fit in this. Generally, about the average consumer purchase. So, what does that mean to you? Less spoilage. How important is that? Drastic. If you're going camping and you want more freezer room than your little camper has, boom, there you go. If you live in a tiny house, hell, this goes, this this slides, it's short enough, believe it or not. Oh, and be, by the way, very strong. You don't want to sit on it and get that in your butt. But my kids sit on this thing all the time, you know, facing that way. <laughs> they haven't heard it. That's not a dent, that's casting. But it's very rigid, very high insulation. I think it's the yellow isofoam. But so far, still closes great, no damage. All right, guys, that's my one-year review. It's proven itself for 14 months now. Um, bought it in, I guess, early April last year. Wanted to do a video on it back then, but I didn't want to do a video on something that would crap out like that other one we had. Okay, it did. It crapped out. It lasted four, six, four to six months and just died. Everything in it spoiled, so didn't want to go show you something that made me do the same. That's over a year, constant use, doesn't produce a lot of heat, makes a hell of a lot of cold. And that branding there don't mean nothing. It's cost way. Look below the video. I'll put the links to that one because it's worth sharing. Y'all guys be good. Pizza time.